and welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. I'm Chris Costa. Chris, what would you like to talk about today? Well, last week we looked at a standard offset press. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can look at a digital press this sure. week. Sure, that's a good idea. Well, okay. Let's take a look. Sure. I'm going to go into file maintenance and we'll go down to call centers and your digital presses are set up under digital. And we'll take a look at my DocuTech here. Uh, I have a couple different processes set up here. Um, mm -hmm. You can set up different processes for different size um, press sheets if you mm -hmm. have different click costs. So that's why I have a couple okay. different ones here. So let's Absolutely. take a look. Okay. So let's look at my run 8.5 by 11. I'm going to modify that. You have your basic process code, your all-inclusive rate as you do with every process and a direct manufacturing rate and a whip rate as we saw last week. You can put in a minimum cost just like you can in an offset press. And you can put in your units per hour, which will be your impressions per hour, just like it is in an offset press. Now you also have, um, as you have an offset press, you do have a setup minutes and a setup cost and a make ready spoilage. So those are the three fields you would use to do any kind of make ready. You don't mm -hmm. have a make ready process to set up like you do in a uh, offset press. Okay. Okay. So okay. here, but you can put in some make ready time. You can put mm -hmm. in a setup cost, just a one time flat cost for setting right. it up or uh, a make ready spoilage amount for amount you'd spoil just for making, getting the press ready to okay. run. Okay? Sure. You can, as with any other press, uh, as we saw last week with your offset press, you can add a spoilage table and a speed table if you want to. And again, all of these fields will come in as defaults and can be changed in an estimate or an order if you want to. You would put in the maximum width and length of the particular press. Now, um, you, it may, in this case, I have it uh, set at 8.5 by 11. Um, mm. My press can probably run higher than that, but this particular process, I only want people to use if they're running 8.5 by 11 because mm. I've set up the pricing structure right. for that. Okay. okay. And are those fields mandatory? They have to be entered? They have to be entered, yeah. Okay. And it won't let you go outside of those bounds? Correct. Correct. Yeah. correct. So it's important to, to have them entered if you and, and entered correctly. <clears throat> if, you, if you leave them at zero and your maximum with a length of zero, it's going yeah. to tell you your press isn't right. uh, too small. Exactly. Okay. okay. Good. Um, your minimum width and, and, and minimum length you could leave at zero if you don't want to force a, uh, them to enter a size larger than a particular size. And then it will take any, any size up to your maximum. And then you also, in a digital press, you may have um, top and side margins here that uh, you want to enter, which are non-printable areas. You can enter them here, and uh, with the top margin, if it's the same all the way around, you can just put it in the top margin, and mm -hmm. it will be used for all four sides. Okay. Um, if it's different for the top and the sides, then you can enter both. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Now, what if I don't want to use the all-inclusive rate, but more like a click cost or a grid? or? Sure. You can do that here just like we could in the offset. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so let's take a look at that. All right. Um, at the top of here, I have uh, my, my description, and in this case, I put the 8.5 by 11 uh, size in here just to let my operator know that that's what this is set up for. But then below that, you see you have your cost grid method. So you have a couple of different choices. You can use a per each, a square foot, a per each for all components, or a linear foot. So with your cost grid set, I set up minus per each, and then you would enter the cost grid at the bottom here. So let me edit one of these line items. So just like with any cost grid in enterprise, you'd put in your, your quantity. Um, you typically would start the cost grid at a quantity of one. Your first cost here, the cost field, is actually your black and white click cost. So this will not be used for color copies or color sides, only for black and white. Um, you can put in a flat fee or a flat cost. Um, and then you have a color click cost. So this will be used for any um, color clicks in the job. So you don't have to set up two processes for black and white and for color. You can do that right within the grid. You also may want to charge for a blank sheet because it does create a click through the press. You may want to charge for that or you may need to charge for that. You could put in a cost here for that as well. And then if you are doing a side two and you want to reduce it, you can reduce that by a certain percentage. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So All that's right. another option. Sure. Uh, one last thing I want to go over is the markup percentage. You may want to mark up the click cost here differently than um, what your default markup is or maybe even what your all-inclusive rate markup is. And you can put in a markup here for this particular quantity. Mm -hmm. And then you can do that for any of your quantities. You may give a price break at some quantity. In my case, I give, I'm giving a price, uh, excuse me, a price break 
um, at a quantity of 5,000 or higher. So my price goes down a little bit, but I, ke I kept my markup the same. You could vary it if you wanted to. Okay, so interesting okay. you said about the markup percentage. So I can treat the all-inclusive rate different than the, than the grid and even maybe more so I can, can I use the grid and the hourly rate together? Absolutely, we've got a couple different options for mm -hmm. that. So let's take a look at those options. Okay, okay. good. So uh, at the top here is underneath the supplier ID, you can see there's a bunch of options here that I can check or uncheck. If I do want to use this markup percentage here in the grid, I have to say that I'm marking it up separately. I have to check this off. Now, um, as you indicated, you may want to just use the grid or you may want to both use the all-inclusive rate and the grid. So I have a couple of choices here. I could say use the cost grid for estimating, which would just use the grid and ignore the hourly rate. Or I could uncheck that and I could use both the cost grid and the hourly rate. And then it would combine the two. And if I do this and I want to mark up, say, the all-inclusive rate here differently than the grid, I can put in a, a markup percentage here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you should have it in here. If you're using a markup separately, you should put it in here. Otherwise, um, if you leave this at zero, it's going to mark it up. Uh, not at all. Right. So you'll have to fill it in in both places, or by unchecking this, it's just going to use whatever the default markup is. Sure. There are some uh, options here for role changes if you were going to set up this particular press for wide format, and we'll take a look at that, uh, doing something like that in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in another WebEx. Okay. Okay? All right. A couple of other options. You may want to base the grid price on the sell quantity, in which case it will look for whatever uh, price it should use based on the sell quantity. Uh, with it unchecked, it's going to go by the quantity of impressions. Um, you can use the cost grid for job costing. Um, if you don't check that, by default it uses the all-inclusive rate. One thing you should note here, this is extremely important, it's exclude click cost from value added formula. If you do want to use the separate markups, that has mm -hmm. to be checked. Okay. And what that does is, is it treats the click cost like a material. Mm -hmm. So uh, your value added is your sell price. Um, minus any materials and outside services okay. and it will just treat this like a, the click cost like a material in that case all right okay um, and then some of the other uh, check boxes you'd see in um, other processes quantities mandatory and job costing you can check that off use finish size instead of press sheet size if it were for large format printing you have that option and then you can also exclude blank sheets from impression counts if you don't want to include that in the number of impressions and then this last option if it's a perfecting press where it prints both sides at the same time, you mm -hmm. can check that off. And then just enter your speed in instead of impressions per hour, but in sheets per hour. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think the only other thing I might have is, um, do we have the same ability to slow down the press? Um, you do for caliper. Outside. You don't have for inks because there are no inks in digital. Mm -hmm. But you will see we do have a tab here where you can enter a caliper thickness okay. and slow down, just like you could in offset. All right. That makes okay. sense. Good. Do you have any other questions? No, I think that was straightforward. Well, thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of VPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanna Flom. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.